I made this game in just three hours. No, I'm not kidding. Let me walk you through the challenge. My time is split up into three one hour long segments. Between each segment I'll get to play the game for a bit and figure out what I need to do next. I can't use any pre-made art or scripts, but I can use sounds or music if I want, which I do. Gimme. The end result was this bullet hell game with a bit of a twist, which I'll get into later. The game is up and available to play on my itch.io page for absolutely free, so after you've finished watching this video, don't be afraid to go and give it a try. Now some of you are probably thinking, why make a game in three hours? What's the point in that? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are three reasons that I want to give this challenge a go. Number one, I need to fill out my itch.io profile a bit more. There are currently only four other games on there, most of which are from when I was first messing around with Godot and don't reflect my current skill level. Two, it's a good way to test out my programming and game design skills. Making a small scale project in a short space of time is a great way to try something new and expand your knowledge of a language or engine. Three, it seemed like fun. And who doesn't like fun? Also, bonus reason, it makes for a good YouTube video. This isn't a massive driving force behind me doing it, but it does make for a nice bonus. The idea has been sitting on my Trello board for a couple of months now, so I'm glad I got to do it finally. I have a bunch of other challenge video ideas sitting there too, so if you want to see those, let me know in the comments below. Or better yet, suggest a challenge of your own. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Anyhow, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's talk about how how this challenge actually played out. But first, funny bar graph. You know what to do. Before I even hit start on the timer, I needed an idea. It had to be small in scope and fairly easy to make quickly. Luckily, I had a pretty good one in mind, a bullet hell game, but not just any bullet hell game. A bullet hell game where you don't move the player, you move the stage. Was this a good idea for a game to make in three hours? In retrospect, no. But I wanted to try it anyways. Now that I had my game idea, it was time to begin. Starting... Now. I started by drawing up some basic sprites. I originally wanted to use vector art for this, but that would have taken up way too much time because I've never made anything with it before and I'd have to learn it all from scratch. So instead, I settled for making sprites out of basic shapes and fire alpaca. I ended up spending longer on this than I wanted to, but in the end, I had everything I needed. Sprites for three kinds of bullets, a player sprite, and a stage sprite. The stage was shaped like an octagon because just a regular old circle wouldn't have been as interesting to move around in. I wanted the player to be affected by physics and using a ring to do that would negate the need to have that in the first place. Godot has a rigid body node which is affected by physics straight off the bat, so I used that for the player. The stage was made using a static body, which might not have been the best choice, but it worked out in the end. After a bit of tinkering, I got the octagon to rotate, and gave the player the ability to kick themselves into the air. This gives the player a bit more to work with, but still gives him limited control, which is what I was going for. You could also hold the up button to rotate the octagon faster, but it would be a lot faster so using it can backfire if you're not careful. I then began working on the bullets. I started with a saw blade, which just traveled in a set direction until it left the screen. It was pretty simple, but implementing it revealed a flaw within the game that I didn't think of beforehand. The player doesn't have enough control to effectively dodge the bullets. There were two ways I could fix this. Make it a regular rolled bullet hell where the player can move around normally, or the alternative I went with, make the bullets rotate with the stage. Now it's way more fun to control. Unfortunately, the saws are moving a bit funky, but that's something I would worry about later. Before the first hour was over, I was able to make a very basic game over screen and a health counter. They're not much and could be improved a lot, but they work for what they're doing. The first hour was over. It was time to take a breather before beginning hour two. Straight away, I changed the way the saw blade spawned in. Instead of only spawning on the sides, they can spawn all around the stage. It's a small change, but helps make the game feel a bit more chaotic. After that, I made the second type of bullet, the drop block. It'd behave similarly to the saw blade, but would pick up speed as it went. It would also only spawn from two sides. Originally, they were only going to drop from the very top, but I decided to opt for something more interesting. Drop blocks also spawn in volleys. They'll be completely absent for however long, and then the game will drop about 10 or so in quick succession. This made the game a lot more interesting than just a bunch of saw blades going back and forth. After this, I decided it was time to add some sounds. I wasn't going to add a whole lot, I didn't really have the time, but I did add enough to fill the game out a bit. I then added a begin screen and changed the colors of the bullets to help them stand out a bit more. I even had time to add some bloom and camera shake to the game, which made it a lot nicer to look at. With the little time I had left in the hour, I decided to add the rocket. It behaves like the saw blades, but is a bit faster and less frequent. I did plan to make the rocket target a specific location on screen and then explode into a volley of bullets, but I didn't have the time, so I had to settle for something else. And as such, time was up. This is actually where the challenge was supposed 
supposed to end, but I just wasn't satisfied with what I had made. I felt like I could have done better if I just had a little more time. So I decided to give myself one final hour to address most of the issues I had with the game and add that little bit of extra polish. And I'm really glad I did. Before I even started the timer, I made a small list of things that I wanted to change, add, or fix. Most of it was just small polishing details, but there was a bit to add in terms of content as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get to all of these, but I tried. Hour 3 begins and I have a good idea of where to start music. I had an old music track I never completed that I really liked and thought could fit with a bit of tweaking. So tweak I did. This added a lot to the game's atmosphere but took up about a quarter of the hour so I had to get back to the game fast. Since we were addressing the atmosphere, I also decided to add a basic backdrop to make the visuals more interesting. It's not very bright but that's on purpose. The bright elements are what I want the player to focus on. The background took way too long to do but I got there in the end and I think it looks great. I also fixed a lot of issues and bugs like the weird saw blade movement. It turns out what was happening was that the saw blades wouldn't change their direction as they were rotated. For example, if a saw blade was moving to the right, and I turned the stage 90 degrees clockwise, it wouldn't start moving down like you'd expect, it would continue moving right. It's a bit hard to explain, but it's fixed, so if you don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry about it. Unfortunately, this completely broke the rockets and their sprites now face random directions, and I still haven't figured out why. Finally, to end off the hour, I rushed to add a giant laser beam. This ended up being really rough around the edges, but it's functional. Might have been better to fix up what was already there actually, now that I think about it. And as such, time was up. I quickly made an icon from the saw blade sprite, slapped together an HAO page, and uploaded the game. You can go check it out now if you want, it's free and it's available on the web. You can also download it if you're on Windows or Linux. Unfortunately, Apple is really crusty and makes the export process a pain, so if you're on Mac you're going to have to play via your browser. Sorry about that. Give it a go and let me know in the comments what your best score was. This was a really fun challenge and one I'm glad I gave a go. If you're a developer, I'd recommend giving it a go at some point too. This was actually a video inspired by one that Goodgus did, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to see more. If you don't like unfamiliar territory though, maybe check out this video. YouTube thinks you'll like it, and I trust their creepy AI algorithm that knows that uncomfortable amount about everyone. Also like and subscribe or something, I don't know.